Welcome to Block 929. Um, today we are going to do, I can call it like part one of the utility tractor um, pickup build. So we are actually building a utility tractor. So, but this one is uh, going to be like a pickup that, that might be used for harvesting. But it's got a, going to have a lot of options because then you can also use it as a passenger vehicle. You can use it as um, uh, an ambulance, most especially in our country where we have a lot of issues when it comes to transportation. But mainly we are doing this for the agriculture sector so that our fellow farmers, when they are harvesting, they can be using this vehicle. It will uh, replace the ox cut. I think uh, abusing animals, we don't want to do that anymore. It's high time that in Africa we, we have to leave our cows alone. Let's start using this kind of vehicle. So I'm going to try to build this vehicle as much affordable as it can. And uh, I think uh, it can help a lot here in Africa. So it's not only targeting Malawi, but it's targeting the whole of Africa. I know the first uh, people to first uh, explore this opportunity are going to be Malawians. So here, I am actually now doing what they call a, a chassis um, jig. So this is a jig that is going to help us to be able to build the chassis, chassis for this uh, the vehicle. The, this is a very, very difficult and very complicated stage because the, the jig has to be perfect. If the jig is not perfect, our vehicle is not also going to be perfect. So our vehicle has to be square, it has to be plumb, therefore the jig has to be square, have to be plumb. So the tape measure is going to be very, very handy and very much needed. But what I've done also here is that just for, with the setup, I haven't actually welded. I have to do, um, check all my measurements, make sure that they're all right, and the, the distances and everything, and check the square. So I'm using these magnets. Yeah, so <clears throat> these magnets, they help, because um, they help you to build a square on a, when you are busy welding, so that you will keep your your steel uh, plumb and also st steady, so that when you're welding, there's no movement. Yeah, so that's why I have got these magnets. I had to buy these magnets special for that. I'm going to use almost maybe 10, or, uh, 10 of these magnets, because from the chassis, the build of the body is going to be uh, coming on top of this 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 uh, jig um, so <clears throat> this is a, a jig that is actually representing the chassis of the vehicle but then on top of this we're going to build the chassis why do we want to be using the jig we're using the jig because once we finish manufacturing this uh, utility vehicle we should be able to, uh, to build another identical uh, utility vehicle so all the from from here from this thing the future vehicles are going to be built from this thing and I think this is the techniques that we in Africa need to start learning using jigs and templates so that uh, we, 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 we produce our products faster and consistent. This is going to help me that uh, each and every utility I'm going to build is going to be identical. We are going to be using this um, uh, <coughs> diesel engine. That's the one that's going to be using it. Some of these engines are up to 10 horsepower, some of them up to 15 horsepower but we will be using diesel engine. So I'm, I've taken this engine and put it here just to see where my engine is going to be. Yeah? So next time, uh, once I've um, built this, I'm, I'm, I need to come with a gearbox just to see where my gearbox is gonna come because I know that my gearbox should be more or less up to maybe 90 length. So the, the gearbox is gonna lay here. So it means that as a driver, you'll be sitting here and then the body of the of the tray, of the, um, the, the body of the utility vehicle is going to start coming here. I know that the body itself is going to, because on top of this, the chassis, there's coming a uh, body. Um, the, 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 I don't know what I can call it, I think I can call it a body. But then it's still going to protrude with about maybe up to here. That's how, how far the body is going to protrude. Okay, some other tools that are going to be very important in this project. It's the levels. So I had to buy this. I, I, I will buy even more levels. This is a very good, a beautiful level. I bought it from Engico. So this this level, I'm gonna buy a couple of them because they'll be helping. As I build the, the vehicle, I will be checking the levels all the time. Because first, the, the jig has to be level. What we're going to do on the jig here, it's going to have cast, um, casters. 
which are like wheels that you can be able to roll it up, put it up, we can move it about in the, in the workshop. So the repeaters are on the corners, but also we're going to have um, adjusters which will help us to adjust the height. So the adjusters will help us that when, once we have adjusted the whole thing in standing, we will adjust the level using the level. So I'll put a level here, I'll put another level there, and I can put another level somewhere here, and another level there, so that the whole jig is standing level. Once the whole jig is level, we can start building the, <coughs> the chassis on top of the, of the jig. So we'll build the chassis, which is going to be identical to this uh, jig, put it on top, then we start putting springs, because here um, there are going to be some springs that are going to come here, uh, that will be mounted to, to the chassis. So we have springs, and as you can see here, it's a location for shocks. So we'll have also the shocks that will be mounted to the, to the, to the chassis. And then after I've done that, we will have we'll build the, the chassis, and then here we'll start working on the mounting for the engine. So we'll be working with the mounting for the engine to make sure that the engine is properly mounted onto the chassis. And then um, um, there is, the chassis is going to have, um, there will be like a bend over here that will come from this side, going this way to, to put the mountings for the, mountings for the engine. And then after that, I will, I will make the engine mountings, and also we are going to do the suspension uh, for the for the front suspension for the for the vehicle, where we have the upper control arms, and then we have the steering rack, and where the hubs are coming. So this is actually the beginning, the genesis of our vehicle. Um, and I know that there are so many people who are watching this, me and following what I'm doing, who are engineers, mechanics. I think he, by me sharing this kind of ideas, you will be able to um, put, put out, give me some of your input to make it very easy for me to, to work on this. So we will be working this, uh, this thing together. So as soon as I'm satisfied with the, the, the squares and the plum and the measurements, I'm going to weld this um, uh, jig together. Then I'm going to weld the casters so that it can be able to move in the workshop and I'm also going to weld the adjusters. So you have them just sort of be standing there. That means that our jig is ready. Then after that, I will start now looking at materials to do the chassis. I don't know what materials to use. I've bought a lead channel. Uh, I don't know if it's a it's good material to use for chassis, but also I can also use the normal uh, channels um, that are used for um, building structures. But I think if I use the normal channels, it's going to be much more heavy. It will be heavier. So. <clears throat> I will be doing more research on the internet. So the diff actually comes from one of those utility vehicles that comes from China, the one that's got three wheels that is using a motorcycle engine. So I bought it from one of the shops in town. Unfortunately, they just sold me the diff. They couldn't sell me the springs. Uh, they refused to sell me the springs. So I bought some springs that I bought um, from, from the, the, the scrap yard. So I bought the springs, they, they are from, uh, I think, an, an, a high jet, a high jet, it's a, it's a small little Japanese vehicle. So I'm, I'm gonna use those springs. And then this div has got special tires. Next time when I'm busy doing the, I mean, the, 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 uh, when I'm busy doing the, the, the chassis, I am gonna put the tires on there so that you can see how it, um, it's going to fit. Yes, um, remember you are actually open to suggestions Criticism. I know many people in Africa, they don't believe uh, that an African can do such kind of things, but I believe I can do it, and I'm sure you'll be watching with me as I'm doing uh, this thing. So I just um, maybe do a, uh, an example of me sitting in there just to see how much I am going to be fitting in there. So yeah, this, this is just an example of uh, my location. Assuming that uh, the gearbox is coming somewhere here, yeah? and I'm sitting here on the vehicle, the engine obviously is going to be on the other side, so here they'll come the, the dashboard and then my, my steering. So the, the, obviously the gearbox is going to be coming here. But, um, we might uh, extend the mounting after they do the, the, uh, we do the chassis, we might um, extend the board itself so that two, people, two passengers can sit in. So here in Malawi, we, we are right-hand drive, so it means that I can be shifting more 
for this side, so I have an area for changing gears, and then I've got an area for my passenger. And then this is a hood, it comes up to here, and then the body will start, uh, the, the, the body will, come, will start coming at the back of, or where, or at my back. So I, I think I'll have enough space, because if I can take a uh, set measure and measure, find out that we're going to have approximately about 180 space for, for our carriage. So I don't think that it's going to be, I, I'm, I'm far away from the whole um, measurements. I'll be, uh, there are some hijacks in town, small little vehicles, I'll go do some measurements there, compare with my, my sizes, because I know that a tire, there will be a tire somewhere here, and then there's going to be a tire somewhere here. So I, I've got this kind of space, which is about like seven, 700 millimeters. Yes, so I'm very excited and I'm very fired up because I know now, I am now upping the game. I'm, step, I'm moving on another level now. This is, um, in, 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 I think uh, like in Malawi, it might be the first time this kind of um, vehicle is produced. Yes, I know that we used to have a vehicle pickup also, which was called Zon, Zon, Zonse, but now we are going to have one that is like much more um, sophisticated, something that will be able to carry a lot of, uh, a lot of um, load on it. And I think it's something that is going to be very useful and something that I believe is going to be accepted by the local um, market and international market. So very soon people in Africa, you'll be buying this kind of vehicle from, from us here in Malawi. And uh, if all goes well, we will have branches all over Africa. Uh, like already I was been, I've been talking on the previous videos that I would like to open a branch in Gambia, uh, where I can also be manufacturing the um, cement block machines, and maybe the utility also can also be manufactured that side. That is just to tap on both of the market, the east and the west. So that, uh, you know, as you know, in Africa, we have a bit of a problem trying to be shipping stuff from one country to another. Yeah, so, all right, thank you very much. I really appreciate the, uh, taking time, but don't forget to subscribe and also uh, press the notification button and like this video. And, if, and don't forget to share also. Thank you very much.